The beginning of a story is not simply page one, paragraph one. Hello and welcome to my writing journey. I'm Ellen Byram, the author of The Crime of Fashion Mysteries and soon to be published Quick Tales for Two. Today I want to talk about the beginning of the story and how you capture the attention of the reader. It's where the journey starts for the reader and it can introduce the characters, the plot, the timeline, the theme and the tone. It is a delicate balance. And also, remember the old saying, well begun is half done. It's not quite true, but it sets you on the road for success. If you know where you're going with your, your writing, the journey is easier. This is not to say that there can't be surprises along the way and a new character pops up, a plot turn surprises you, but you have the basic story inside of you. If it takes more time thinking it through to get it right, do that if you need to take a long walk, a long swim, or just more time to make sure you're beginning it in the right place. Do that. Sometimes people start in the wrong place. They should start where their middle is rather than the all of the exposition up front. The start of a story is where you invite the reader in. It's a hint of where it's going. Is it a thriller, a mystery, a romance? Is it science fiction or fantasy? All of those things can be expressed in the first few lines of your book, in the beginning of your book, or your first chapter. It sets the tone. Is it funny, dramatic, frightening, or simply puzzling like a traditional mystery? A beginning can foreshadow the action, and it's a place to set up certain expectations. As readers, we want our expectations to be met and rewarded. This is not always the case. As the playwright Chekhov said, or was possibly misquoted, if you bring a gun on stage, that gun has got to go off. Now, the funny thing about Chekhov is I don't think he was funny at all, and his comedies don't strike me as a laugh-a-thon. Uh, take the seagull. There is a gun. The seagull is shot. Also, the gun is used in a suicide. It's not a laugh riot in my book, but you might think so. But what Chekhov says is important. You set something up, and you set up an action to be completed to meet the reader's expectations. I have a couple of examples of books that I've read. One, I remember, begins with a cop who quits his job as a cop, he's going to be a PI, and he buys his dream car, a Maserati. Within a few pages, that Maserati is stolen, he gets a look at the suspects, a gang of kids, and we never find out what happened to the Maserati. He's a PI. He's an ex-cop. He should know how to trace that car. Is it in a chop shop? It hasn't been stolen. Has it been repainted and moved on? But no, it's just used as a foil so he can buy a beater of a car like an old Buick and run around in it like a traditional PI. I was so disappointed. I kept thinking, okay, he's a cop. How's he going to use this? How's he going to find that Maserati? How is he going to get it back or prove a point or uncover a ring of thieves? Nope. Nothing like that at all happened. I was sorely disappointed. Another highly acclaimed book I read had a prologue where a child grew up to be a cop. And as a child, he was kidnapped and involved in a crime, a criminal action. 20 years on, that kid, who's a cop now, is involved in the investigation of another crime, almost exactly like the first one. How do they meet? How do they hold meaning for each other? There isn't anything. Turns out, the first action had nothing to do with the second action. This is not satisfying, and I fear very much I will never read that writer again. Even though that writer was a beautiful writer, the words were gorgeous, the writing was exquisite. But for me, not satisfying. Not going to fall for that one again. Now I'm reading a book that it features a cop. It starts with a cop drinking coffee and describing the weather. Now, I don't say you can't describe the weather and drink coffee, but I hope that it means something more than just a strong shot of Java. What does this mean? Will it turn? Will it change? Will it mean anything by the end of the book? But sometimes a cup of coffee is just a cup of coffee. However, if you want to start with coffee, it could be different. It could be a suspect over watching a murder victim 
calmly drinking a cup of coffee. It could be a cop at the scene sipping coffee before he goes and investigates. It could set the scene in a different way, no matter how you use it. You could have something like, the smell of strong coffee reminded her of things she could never have again. So you can use it a different way. If you must talk about the weather, make it more interesting. Make it mean something. For instance, a brilliant blue day like this started like the day he lost everything, all his hopes and dreams. Well, I have hopes for this story, but I suspect the coffee is just a cup of coffee. I have my own coffee memory. When I was a reporter, we used to have to go next door to the coffee shop to get coffee because my boss was so cheap, there wasn't even a coffee maker in the building. And he wouldn't have paid for it anyway. So we went next door and the waitress hated our guts. She would fling our coffee at us and then go behind a screen and cough madly like a tuberculosis victim. So if I ever start with coffee, it will probably be that waitress who hated us. Openings can showcase your individual story and what's important because I started life as a reporter with a waitress who hated me and flung her coffee at me. I have always considered the beginning of books to be my lead, spelled L-E-D-E. Something to catch the attention of the reader, to keep them reading. Now, when I do books, I know that the cover is going to have people pick up the book, open it, and then I will read you the beginning of Killer Hair. Page one, chapter one. Lacey Smithsonian looked down at the unfortunate woman in the coffin and thought, oh my God, that is the worst haircut I've ever seen. And they say a bad haircut can't kill you. Another book that I wrote, this is The Woman in the Dollhouse. In my memories, my eyes are always green. As green as the dark and dangerous sea, my grandfather used to say. Mermaid's eyes, he called them. Eyes that changed from the color of seaweed to sea glass to the green of troubled water. Yet I was never troubled when my eyes were green. So you can do a lot with your first few lines, your first chapter. Remember to set it up. Take care with what you want to say because this is the opening of your book. And that's all I have for now. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. The beginning of a story is not simply page one, paragraph one. Hello and welcome back to my writing journey. I'm Ellen Byram, author of The Crime of Fashion Mysteries and soon to be published, Crook Tales for One, a completely different book, different time frame. I'm just, what? Crook Tales for Two. What did I say? Crook Tales for One. <laughs>